I thought I would talk about sharing some ideas about reading professionally and the um, attitude you should have, or at least what's worked for me and probably would work for you too. So I'm just sharing some ideas. We have our monthly Zoom gathering. I don't know if that's a podcast or not. I really don't even know what you would call it. But it's a Zoom meeting, and we're just a bunch of readers getting together, talking about uh, different ideas about the cards and uh, sharing ideas. And I've had some comments that disagreed with what was being said. And that's fine. You know, there's no... There is no right way or wrong way. There's no wrong way to do it. That's one thing I'd like to say. I've known many readers over the years, pro readers, and everybody's got their own way. But there's no real wrong way or right way. There's no best way to do it. And people can have their, their own opinions about that. But really, what what is right or wrong is is um, hard to prove. It would be like trying to decide which is a better car, Cadillac or a Lincoln. You know, you just you're not gonna you're not gonna find an answer. So to say um, certain things have to be a certain way, I don't think is right. Also, I'd like to say, I'd like to mention that. If you're, if you're looking into this, a psychic reading, whatever you want to call this that we do, is um, a prediction. And I, like I said, I've known readers all my life. I've never known one reader who was always right. You will never be always right. You're making a prediction. And um, it's not so you can't be always right. And so if you meet somebody who says they're always right, and they're never wrong. I would uh, shy away from that person. To say you're always right would be like a professional baseball player that never strikes out at the plate. It's just not going to happen. I don't care how good of a batting average you have. There's going to be times when you strike out. So then it just becomes a, a matter of how good is your average as a reader. And if you've got a good average, your clients aren't going to care when you're wrong. Because they've been to other readers, and you're right most of the time more than the other readers. Were. So they trust what you're saying. So they start to you start to see how it works. You're making a prediction. And um, if if you're usually in a good in a in a place where it seems to work out that way, it'll be it'll get around. It'll get around. But there's no special vision that the reader has. And if you know anything about psychic awareness and how it works. You know that. You know, it just doesn't work that way. So I'd say that the things that I teach, I've been a pro reader for 30 years. And it's been a wonderful time. And I would say that the way I teach is based on what worked for me. And a lot of that isn't going to work for you. You're just not going to want to do it that way. And that's fine. Nobody reads this. Nobody, no two people read the same anyway. You'll pick up a few things from this person or from that person. You might pick up some things from me. And that's fine. Um, but that doesn't mean you're going to do everything that I did. You just not, certain things you're not going to want to do that. Way. And that's okay. That's you. You want to do it your way. Certain things you're going to try too. And maybe this doesn't work. So I'm going to try something else. You're constantly fine-tuning it and making it better. And there's really no 
exact pinpoint procedure to this. I had somebody who commented on my YouTube channel, wanted to know um, what hand they're supposed to draw the cards from, the left hand or the right hand, and that they've heard both. They've heard some people say you draw cards from the left hand, and some people say you draw cards from the right hand. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. Draw those cards from what, your foot if you want to. It doesn't make any difference. As long as they get on the table, <laughs> it's not going to make any difference what hand you draw those cards in. The same thing with like things like um, what order do you lay the cards down? And let's say a Celtic cross, they show a couple different procedures on which way to lay the cards down. It doesn't make any difference. Whatever works for you. I lay them down a certain way. There's like two or three different ways to do it. And it doesn't make any difference. Just find which one you like and use that. So whatever works for you best is the, is the correct thing for you to do. And we're all unique. We're all going to have our own little things we like and we don't like. And I think it's, I think it's really good for you to meet other readers, which is why I like our meetings. You get all sorts of interesting insight from other pros on how they read. There's been some, some readers in there who prefer to, to do cold readings. I don't. I know, I, I know readers that refuse to do cold readings. So, you know, Things like that, let alone the deck you're using. And one deck better than another? No. What deck to use is the one you like. That's the deck you use. So there's really a lot of aspects with the tarot that we're just learning about. One thing I'll say for sure that, um, that I strongly feel on is um, psychic awareness is something that you can't stake your life, life on. And I'm not going to um, accuse somebody of something that's not there because of a psychic premonition or something serious that could be, there could be unfair judgment on somebody based on a premonition of something. That wouldn't be fair. Oh, I can do it. To make you happy, the quarant. But I, I wouldn't do that. And if I'm wrong, you wouldn't come back to me for another reading. I, I don't believe that destiny is out there. I don't believe we're here to follow some strict path that's going to go this way or that way, no matter what. I think it's, I think as a reader, you're searching for options and what's the best way to go about doing things, not looking to see what is going to happen, but what is possible is what you're looking for. What's possible doesn't mean it's going to happen. But it's possible. I say the best way to predict the future is to create it yourself. And that's what I strive to do in my readings is look for the best path you have to succeed in what you're trying to do. What gives you the best advantage? What increases your odds of success the most? How to handle this? And if you can do that, I, I see you, you can't lose. You can't lose. And intuitive intuitive insight comes in a reading? Sure, sure it does. One of those positions or a couple of the positions might actually be showing you something just blaring at you in an intuitive way. And I think that's that can happen. That, it, that does happen. 
I really think that um, what you're looking to do is find um, solutions or answers that are that aren't seen. Answers that are not seen right now. So divination is a very strange thing. It's really a powerful thing. And as you read, you're gonna you're gonna develop that more and more. It's just gonna happen because you're practicing developing it by doing readings. You don't even know you're doing it. And you will some of you might have clairvoyance. And uh, some of you might hear things or see things during a reading. That happens. And you just might see new ideas in those cards, too. But you're not going to know if you were right or wrong until they come back and tell you one way or the other. Or you hear about it, you know. And that's really basically what it comes down to. And if you read pro, you're going to have people coming back to you. You're not going to make a living by just reading people one and once and never read them again. You're not going to make a living that. So you're going to have clients. You're going to develop clients that come to you when they when they need answers for something in their life. And I shouldn't say you're not going to make a living doing that way. I guess it's possible, especially now with the internet. You could do that. Probably can have read people you just read once and and that's that but i think you're better off having um having a client base you develop clients you don't have to worry about finding new work and reading old clients is just like talking to somebody on the phone you know a lot about them to begin with so so anyway don't be afraid to to put your own ideas in how to read for yourself. And I think it's very easy to fall into that trap. Let's say I'm teaching you how to read. Well, there's certain things you're gonna do that I that I think are, are work for you, will work for you. And then as you go on, you're gonna change those and the things that you like to do instead work better for you. And then you're gonna to think to yourself, well, I'm not really a real reader because I don't do things the way Vince doesn't. But that's not true. You are a real reader because you're not doing what I do. You're a real reader because you're doing what you want to do. A lot of people talk themselves out of thinking they ever really know the cards well just because what they're doing with them is what they, they feel to do with them. That's really when you become, that's your, then you're a reader. You found your way to do it. You're not copying me. Sure, you might use some of my techniques or some of the things I talked about, but you're you figured out your own way. No two readers read the same. These are just some thoughts I had. I thought I would mention. Our 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 monthly Zoom meetings are great places, a great thing, a lot of fun. Second Tuesday of the month. 12 o'clock Chicago time, go to tarotmaps.com. I'll put a link down below. Tarotmaps.com is how you get into the meeting. You don't have to sign in or register or nothing. You just go in and click. All are welcome. So if you got any questions about the cards, come on there. Or if you just want to hang around, chat, it's a good place to go. So I hope you find these little ideas of mine interesting. And we'll talk soon. Thanks.